In this video, we'll be going over all the equations of motion necessary to simulate a sounding rocket trajectory, which is a nearly vertical flight. So here are the results of a simulation of a sounding rocket trajectory. And in this case, the motion is one dimensional in the Y axis, but even one dimensional motion of rocket trajectories can be very interesting to simulate and analyze. So in this simulation, the rocket is thrusting with a constant thrust for the first 200 seconds, which is shown in the purple sections of the plots, and then coasting with zero thrust for the next 500 seconds. So starting at the top left, we see that the altitude is increasing non-linearly with respect to time during the thrust phase. And this makes sense because this simulation uses a constant thrust and mass is linearly decreasing while the rocket is thrusting, which is shown in the plot here in the bottom right. So with the same amount of force or thrust and less mass, we expect more acceleration as the time goes on, which we can see in the acceleration plot here in the middle. On the bottom left, we see the dynamic pressure versus time, and there is a massive spike at the beginning, with the top being called the maximum dynamic pressure, or max Q. And we'll be going more into depth into that in the next video. And on the top right, we see that the flight path angle is at a constant 90 degrees, since the rocket's velocity is always vertical. And then here for the velocity plot, we see again, the velocity is also increasing non-linearly. And then once the thrust cuts off, all the velocity is changing with a constant acceleration, which is just the acceleration due to Earth's gravity. In this rocket trajectories video, we'll be going over the free body diagram or the sum of the forces in order to be able to calculate the acceleration equation of the rocket. We'll be going over gravity modeling using Newton's universal law of gravitation, atmospheric drag modeling, state vector, and derivatives in order to plug these equations of motion into an ordinary differential equation solver. And if you haven't seen it already on this channel, I have the Space Engineering Podcast, which is also available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Simplecast. I also have a tons of other videos on orbital mechanics with Python, and also I have videos in Spanish on this channel. So let's take a look at the free body diagram for sounding rocket trajectory. And the three forces we will model are gravity, thrust, and aerodynamic drag. And we'll be going deeper into aerodynamic drag in the next video. So for this one, I'm going to exclude it. So if we don't consider aerodynamic drag, we get that the sum of the forces onto the rocket is equal to the thrust plus the force due to gravity, and that is equal to the change in momentum of the rocket with respect to time, and this comes from Newton's second law. And in the propagation, we can use F equals MA, which is a simplified version of this equation, since a differential equation only considers a single moment in time at each propagation step. So from that, we get that the acceleration of the rocket is equal to the rocket's thrust divided by its mass at that specific time, plus the acceleration due to gravity. Now for the acceleration due to gravity, we use Newton's universal law of gravitation, which states that the force due to gravity on the rocket is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the rocket divided by the distance between them squared. And that's the distance from the center of mass of the Earth to the rocket, not the Earth's surface. And since the gravitational constant is constant in our universe and the mass of the Earth is constant, we put those two numbers together to define a mu value for the Earth. And again, using Newton's second law, we divide both sides of the equation by the rocket's mass to get that the magnitude of the gravitational acceleration onto the rocket is equal to the mu value of Earth over R squared, where R in this case is the radius of the Earth plus the altitude of the rocket. And if you plug in that equation, we get this graph here that shows the magnitude of the gravitational acceleration as a function of altitude. Where, where we are on, when we are on Earth's surface, we get the expected 9.81 meters per second squared, and we go all the way up to around 400 kilometers of altitude, where the acceleration due to gravity is around 8.7 meters per second squared. And since this is a function of altitude, we must calculate the gravitational acceleration at every single time step. And if you'd like to learn more about the two-body problem and Newton's universal law of gravitation, I'll have a link in the description to this video I made covering that in much more detail. We'll be going way deeper into detail on atmospheric drag modeling and maximum dynamic pressure in the next video. But as a sneak peek, here's this plot here where you can see as altitude increases, the atmospheric density decreases exponentially, as we can see in here. And then if we have a log scale on the right, we can see that it looks linear on a log scale.
And finally, to solve the equations of motion with a differential equation solver, we must figure out what our state variables are and their time derivatives. So in this case of one dimensional motion, our state variables are only position in the y direction, velocity in the y direction, and mass, since the acceleration due to thrust is a function of the rocket's mass. And then the respective derivatives are velocity, acceleration, and m dot, or time rate of mass, where we see the full equations for those derivatives on the right, where here we have the acceleration of the rocket is equal to the thrust of the rocket divided by the mass of the rocket at that given time step minus mu of the earth over ry squared. And then the time derivative of the mass is equal to negative since the mass is decreasing for the rocket. Thrust over specific impulse times g, where g is 9.8 one meters per second squared and in this case this is when you are using the isp definition of seconds and not meters per second so using an initial condition of zero altitude zero velocity and some arbitrary mass we come back to these plots to see the results of simulating these equations of motion so we can start with the mass with respect to time here where we see that the mass is linearly decreasing with respect to time while the rocket is thrusting and we can kind of think about why this is so we have the equation of the time rate of change of mass is equal to negative since the mass of the rocket is decreasing thrust which in this case we are assuming to be a constant thrust isp which we are again assuming to be a constant value and g is a constant number so this whole term is a constant value and when the derivative of a function is a constant value that means the function itself is linear and then once a rocket cuts off the thrust the the mass is constant for the rest of the time since there is no thrust no mass is being expelled from the rocket then we get to the altitude versus time, which again, we see that it is increasing non-linearly because the acceleration is increasing over time since the thrust is constant, but the mass is decreasing. And that means that acceleration is going to increase. And then what's, once the engine cuts off here, thrust equals zero, the rocket still has a lot of velocity. So it's going to cruise up for a while until it hits its maximum point right here. And we know that the derivative of position is velocity so we see that at the top of the trajectory here is exactly when velocity hits zero and that should make sense in our head because again the derivative when the derivative equals zero you either have a maximum or a minimum and we see that there is a maximum here at exactly that time and for acceleration again the acceleration is increasing until the cutoff point and once thrust equals zero the only acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity and we see that its magnitude is actually decreasing while the rocket is gaining altitude so here is zero and it's a negative value so its magnitude is decreasing up until the top here as altitude starts to come down and its magnitude starts increasing again and again, for the velocity, we see that the thrust here, and then once the thrust cuts off, it's, this is almost linear motion because this is almost a constant value, and the acceleration is a derivative of the velocity. So we expect to see almost linear motion of the velocity, which we see there. And dynamic pressure, again, we'll get to in the next video, but the reason that there's such a maximum here, it, it's that it's a sweet spot where there's enough density in the atmosphere and the rocket has enough velocity. So even though the rocket gains more velocity after this peak, the atmosphere is getting thinner. So that's why it's kind of a sweet spot in there where the velocity is pretty high and then the density of the atmosphere is also pretty high. And again, we'll be going way deeper into detail in the next video. So be sure to hit like and subscribe to help me out with YouTube algorithm and to keep up to date with all the new videos coming out on this channel. And please let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this video, if anything's confusing, if I need to explain something a little bit better, just let me know down in the comments. And the next video will be going over aerodynamic drag and maximum dynamic pressure.